Welcome back to Intro to Logic. In this video, we'll be going over conditionals and rule of assumption. The terms that we'll cover in this video are conditionals, antecedent, consequent, rules of inference, and rule of assumption, also known as RA. Before proceeding, we should stop and ask ourselves, what is the point of doing symbolic logic? Or what do we hope to gain from doing symbolic logic? Well, let me try to put things in perspective for you. We use rules in our reasoning all of the time. Consider an example. If I am going to graduate on time, then I must take a summer course. I am going to graduate on time. Maybe you're very determined to do so. And so I am taking a summer course. This is a very basic argument, but it is in fact an argument. And so we can turn to logic to ask ourselves whether this is in fact a good argument. The way we do that is that we have a certain system of rules of inference, rules which are truth preserving, and we use those rules to create formal arguments and logical proofs which help us determine whether the arguments are in fact valid or good. So we can say that one of the primary aims of symbolic logic is to find these valid rules of inference, that is truth preserving rules, and state them clearly so that we can use them to further analyze our reasoning. And that's really what we're going to be doing in this class. We're going to be using the already established rules of inference to analyze different arguments. And so we're going to come up with logical proofs to determine whether an argument is in fact good or bad. Hopefully this has given you a better grasp of what symbolic logic is and why we care about doing it. Now let's proceed to learn some terminology. First, consider the term conditional. A conditional is an if-then sentence. For example, the sentence, if I go to the store, then I will buy pop, is a conditional. And we know it's a conditional because, because it has both a then part and an if part. The if part of the sentence is called an antecedent. So here we have the sentence, within the sentence, I go to the store. So, I go to the store is the antecedent of this conditional, and the then part of the sentence is what we call the consequent. The sentence, I will buy pop, is the consequent of the conditional, if I go to the store, then I will buy pop. And notice that when I ask you, what is the antecedent of this conditional, you shouldn't say, if I go to the store. Instead, remove the if part, and it's just the assertion, which is the antecedent. Similarly for the consequent. If I ask you what the consequent of this conditional is, you shouldn't say, then I will buy pop. The consequent is just the assertion part, which is, I will buy pop. Also keep in mind that there's another way to write this conditional. Instead of writing, if I go to the store, then I will buy pop, you could write, I will buy pop if I go to the store. What this example demonstrates is that a conditional doesn't have to be in a certain order. The if and the then could change the order, they could be reversed, and you could even have a conditional where there is no actual use of the terms if and then. For instance, here's an example where we have a conditional which doesn't make use of the terms if or then. So here's our initial easy to identify conditional. If you are a man, then you are mortal. And here's the same sentence but structured differently. All men are mortal is actually just the conditional if you are a man, then you are mortal. So keep in mind that how you identify a conditional could be a little bit tricky because we can write conditionals in various forms. And last but not least, keep in mind that we'll represent conditionals using a sideways horseshoe shape or a sideways V. So the sentence, if I go to the store, then I will buy pop, can be represented if we, let's see, we'll sign the assertion if I, I go to the store with an S and I will buy pop with a P. And so we can represent this conditional by if S then P or if S then P. Either use of the conditional sign works. Let's proceed to learn about our first rule of inference, the rule of assumption. According to the rule of assumption, one can assume any sentence as a premise in an argument at any point in a proof. What that simply means is that you are allowed to assume any sentence you want at any point in your proof, and all you have to do is indicate that you've used it, that, that is an assumption. 
So what I mean by that is you're going to draw your proofs as follows. First, you're going to have a scope line, which is a way of indicating the different steps, keeping things clear in your argument. Then you're going to write out the lines in your argument. So our first line is, of course, just number one. And we'll continue to just number the lines as follow, however many lines are needed for that argument. And then you write your first premise. So we'll assume the letter P, which stands for some sentence. And we're going to indicate how we arrived at P. How did we get P in our argument? In this case, we've just assumed it. So we're going to use the letter A to represent the fact that we've used the rule of assumption to derive P. Now, on a side note, some people use the letters RA to abbreviate the rule of assumption. So you can use either or. I'm fine with that. In this case, I'll just use the shorter version, A. And here we have our first line, which is an assumption. And that line is the letter P. Now you might have another assumption, if P then Q. And we would then play around with premises one and two and see if there's any way we can derive something new. And as we'll learn in the next videos, you could use modus ponens to derive Q. And then maybe you want another assumption like if Q then R. So here we would have one, two. Modus ponens is a rule we're gonna learn about. So I've labeled the lines I've used the rule I used to derive Q with those lines. And then here, all down here, we happen to have another assumption I've thrown in. And maybe down on line 10, you would get another assumption. And so on. So the point here is you can assume any premise you want in your argument, but you have to make sure that you identify the fact that you've assumed that premise, that you haven't derived it from any other premises as we did in line three. You may be wondering at this point, how in the world could we be justified in just assuming any old premise that we want? The basic idea is that, look, in logic, one of the main things we're worried about is whether our form of reasoning is justified. So at this point, we're really not just concerned with the truth of the content. So whether P is in fact true, what we're concerned with is whether we've used the right rules of inference to deduce further conclusions. So you could assume anything you want, and then what you're really testing for is what you can justifiably deduce from those assumptions. So here we're really focusing on the structure of our reasoning and not so much the content of our reasoning. And that allows us to assume all sorts of stuff and be justified in doing it. In this video, we've gone over the following terms, conditionals, antecedent, consequent, rules of inference, and rule of assumption, which can be abbreviated as either RA or A. This has been an intro to logic video on conditionals and rule of assumption. Be sure to check out our other videos at introtologic.com.